I've got this friend named Charlene, and on a hot summer night, I asked her what she thought of, of John Deere, of John Deere Green, and she said it looked good to her. You know, it, it looked good to Charlene and, and John Deere Green, and so I thought to myself, well, maybe John Deere Green can help my portfolio make me some green. So today's video, we're going to talk about John Deere, dividend stock, more of a blue chip stock. We haven't done a ton of DGI on the channel recently, been focused a lot on the growth, but as you know, if you've followed me for a while, I do have a soft spot for dividend growth investing, and I think it's an important part of a portfolio, and I think you can use dividend growth investing really to, to get passive income, to retire early, to retire young, to have financial independence, and so it's part of the whole fired up methodology, you know, fired up wealth, that's financial independence, retire early with dividends. And I like, as a young investor, I even like some dividend stocks, some what I call DGIF stocks, dividend growth investing for fired stocks. John Deere doesn't really necessarily fit into the DGIF, doesn't fit into a great DGI, it doesn't really fit in a growth stock. So what exactly is it? And should I buy it? Should you buy it? Should you add it to your long-term investing portfolio? That's what I'm gonna to cover today. Stay tuned. All right, so what this is here, this is a letter from the CEO and you can get it right from their website. There's a lot of good information on here. I'm gonna go through some of the highlights. So this paragraph here on the very top on the left of your screen, the company's financial performance allowed it to make further investments in technology enabled products and services for growth oriented projects. For the year, Deere devoted $2.4 billion to research and development. Additionally, $1.7 billion was returned to investors through dividends and share repurchases. Now, let's talk a second about what this means. John Deere is a great company. It's been around for a really long time. But this is a company that's pivoting, that's trying to use technology to improve. And through that technology, there's a lot of things that they can do for their customers and in return for the shareholders. So you think they're already firing on all cylinders and they're making more investments into technology enabled products. In fact, they just hired a chief technology officer. They hired a CTO at John Deere and that's something they hadn't had before. And this technology officer is, is basically there to help with this next stage of the company. So everybody wants to look at John Deere and say, well, historically the PE has been this and you know, it's too expensive here. This is a completely different company. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's a hyper growth company or anything like that, but this is a, a long term established mature company that's pivoting into a new era of business. And I do think there's opportunity for growth. And I also think you could essentially revalue the company at a higher price, at a higher mul multiple that you could essentially pay more for this company because there's more growth in the future. There's more excitement around the future of the business. So this part's cool here. The new all X series combines are our most advanced ever. The technology rich machines average 45% more harvesting capacity across all crops, all while using 20% less fuel. The X9 1100 can harvest up to 30 acres of wheat per hour and up to 7,200 bushels of corn per hour. A full suite of new front end equipment is also available with the new models. So right here, guys, look at this. In addition, operations for technology development, our tech stack were consolidated under a chief technology officer. The move leverages our ability to rapidly develop advanced technologies and bring new products to the market. As well, our customer support and aftermarket capabilities were combined into lifecycle solutions unit. This aligns with our goal of supporting customers over the lifetime of the products. So the reason for this too is because they are going to do more and more subscription-based software as a service. So you can essentially buy a new combine or a new piece of equipment and pay an annual subscription to have these services. And they're gonna need customer support for that as well. So this is talking about in Brazil, can almost double user productivity. So when you think of the technology advancements for Deer, it's not just you think of autonomous and you think of the subscription as a service model and all those things. They're, they're making these more efficient. They're using technology to make it more efficient, to save money, to save fuel, to essentially get more productivity 
out of these new machines. And so more, more farmers are going to adopt this, understand this and adopt this, and they're going to spend money to upgrade to new equipment. So John Deere, it could certainly be one of those opportunities where it's a life cycle. There could be a cycle here where there's new equipment being bought over the next several years. And that cycle might not last forever. But when I look at the prospects, to me, it's a good opportunity to get into this company because they're just starting this technology you know, growth phase within their business. Let's look at the most recent investor presentation. What in the world? <laughs> I've got an alien effect on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Frog, dizzy. No, we don't want that. What are, what are all these here? Stretch, no. Is there just one that's like normal? Stretch, how about a twirl? How about a twirl? <laughs> okay, hold on. Thermal, no, 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 no. Okay, normal, sorry, just playing around. If you're watching this, I'm sitting in Vegas right now, so I'm just having a little bit of fun, but let's get to business. So investor presentation, this is from fiscal 2021. There's a lot of great information on here. Now this video is really just gonna give you a high level overview of some of the technologies, the direction of the business, and I'll give you my thoughts on the stock price towards the end of the video. So definitely watch the entire video. I may or may not sing John Deere Green. If you didn't catch the reference in the beginning in the intro, it's a song. So John Deere strategy, okay? They're trying to take a legacy type business, an old school blue chip type business model, and you know, add technology to the mix. And for a couple of reasons, number one, to improve efficiency, for farmers, number two, to give a competitive advantages for John Deere versus its competition. And number three, to, to provide recurring revenue. So it's almost essentially like a SaaS model that you can, a subscription-based model that you can subscribe to and pay an annual fee, which of course, anytime a business goes into a subscription as a service model, it always draws my attention because if you don't know my background, I used to sell software as a service and I really believe in subscription-based models, especially as an investor, it's much easier for us to identify revenue streams. Now, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. John Deere is definitely not gonna to turn to a SaaS company, and this is gonna be a small part of their business, but I do think the technology and the direction of the business is exciting. It's of course why the stock has run up, you know, 100% or whatever the number is from June, but it has made a pullback recently, and I wanna take a look at this a little closer to see if it's something that I should add to my portfolio and something you should add to maybe your portfolio. So I'm just gonna provide you information. I can't make the decision for you. And stay tuned for the end because I'll tell you what I've done with the stock and what I'm gonna do next. So John Deere strategy. So when you think of smart industrial strategy, they're trying to revolutionize agriculture and construction. And a lot of people don't talk about the construction part of it. So it is important to note that they are doing more on the construction side. So a lot of people know John Deere of John Deere Green, tractors. They also do construction equipment. And some of that construction equipment, well, actually the, the building equipment is generally you know yellow. So a lot of times people misinterpret what they see because they think it's a caterpillar when they see yellow. But John Deere makes construction equipment as well. Of course, they're most famously known for their agricultural equipment. You know, you probably think of a tractor, lawn mowers, you know, things like that. These guys are actually gonna get into autonomous technologies, satellites being able to control the amount of spray and just pinpointing things, things that humans can't do and that machines, that existing machines can't do. And even things like drones, drones to actually spray weeds and for crops and fields and things like that. And, and I do have kind of a farming background. I did grow up on a farm in the Midwest for a few years. My grandpa was a farmer, so by no means am I an expert farmer. I have a lot of friends though, and I have gotten feedback. I had a phone call with a friend of mine who's a farmer in North Dakota and he uses all John Deere and is a huge fanboy. And it's funny, it's like, okay, did you actually invest in the stock then? Oh no, I never really thought about it. And isn't that funny how that always works? You think of some of the best investments you've probably had in your life were investments where you essentially bought the stock because you knew what the company did, you understood it, and you had confidence in the business model, you used it, you were loyal, whatever. And of course, we always do our research, we do the fundamentals, but sometimes the best stocks are the ones that you buy just because you have conviction and nothing more, right? So it's funny to me when you talk to somebody that literally can just, you can tell he's passionate about John Deere's technology and the direction of the company, yet he doesn't own any shares of the stock. So I think that's always kind of interesting. So John Deere will deliver intelligent, connected machines and applications that will revolutionize production systems in ag and construction 
to unlock customer economic value across the life cycle in ways that are sustainable for all. This is actually something that I, I like to invest in because I believe in it. It improves efficiency, you use less fuel, it helps farmers, it helps the world though, right? We have a growing population. You know, there's a lot of hungry people around the world and if we can get more yield from our crops, every single bushel makes a difference, right? So I actually believe in this company for a lot of reasons, but the technology side of it is really exciting. I also think it's doing a lot of good for mankind and I think it's the future of farming. So their execution of their strategy for this technology strategy is focused on three key areas. So they've got production systems, which unlock customer value. They've got the technology stack. This is why I, I got excited about the company and started researching is the technology part of it. In fact, ARC ETFs were buying this in the ARCQ, the Industrial uh, Innovation Technology, Disruptive Technology ETF. And that kind of drew my, drew my attention. I just never really had insight into how much stuff John Deere is doing from the technology side of the, the house. So it's pretty exciting stuff. So the technology stack enables the machines to be smarter, more precise, and more productive. The life cycle solutions adds value throughout the life cycle of the product, maximizing uptime and minimizing cost. It goes back to efficiency. So this talks about their organizational design and how it aligns with their customer's business. So you can see they've got the business units, they got the production and precision ag. Okay, so you think of all the different crops, so corn and soy, small grains, sugar cane, cotton, small ag and turf. So they've got things like turf and compact utility, dairy and livestock, et cetera. They also have a construction and forestry division and that has earth moving, road building, forestry, things like that. So that's when you see the John Deere, you know, loaders and things like that, that would, that would be in the construction and forestry section. And then the enabling businesses, you got the intelligent solutions group, the aftermarket customer support, the John Deere financial, and then the power system. So they have a financial component too, where they do loans and, and things like that. So a, a financial uh, part of their business. So this next slide here is going to talk about technology stack, accelerates precision and automation while driving efficiency. So you got autonomy, which is of course, one of the keywords we like when we talk about disruptive technology and growth in fired up wealth. You, know, you got your automation, machine, you know, machine learning, machine IQ, connectivity and digital solutions, guidance, and then hardware and software. So a full set of technology required to help customers increase productivity, profitability, and sustainability. So again, this is going back to doing good, right? It's, it's increasing productivity, helping out farmers. It's making them more profitable, but it's also better for the world. It's more sustainable. And it also is just better in terms of economics, you know, being able to yield more crop, getting more food to more people, things like that. So there's a lot of good reasons to invest in a company like John Deere, in my opinion. So this talks about their technology stack and how it continues to evolve. And this is actually a really cool slide. You got the autonomy, there's Blue River Technologies, that's computer vision and machine learning. You've got all these different components, I won't read them all, but it's, it's pretty cool. Like, so you got the, the Navcom, you got satellite guidance, right? Guidance manufacturing. And they're trying to upgrade the, their systems right now. There is a Chinese company that does something similar that's competing. But the thing about John Deere is they're integrating it into their entire stack. So there's arguments. I've seen articles online about how China can disrupt this because they have cheaper or free products that essentially can do a lot of this GPS stuff. But if I'm a farmer and I'm going to buy you know, a $200,000 combine and it's $2,000 a year for the subscription, you know, it's probably not that it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. And I'm probably just going to trust John Deere and that, you know, John Deere's components and their software is going to work best with John Deere. So I think that argument can be easily debunked, especially I come from a software background. I think it's just, there's a lot of brand loyalty and you're talking about a very small amount money wise. So the people writing those articles probably don't have a ton of insight into to really what farming is all about. And they probably don't have a ton of insight of how the technology can relate to farming. So I'm taking my technology background and my, you know, very brief farming background and mixing this together and trying to make sense of it for you. So their 2022 goal at mid cycle is 15% margins. You can see on your screen there, this slide here is pretty cool. So John Deere machines stacked with their, their industry leading technology. So taking their machines, which they've always been good at making, taking their technology and constantly improving that technology, trying to take it to the next level and talking about basically helping their customers complete production cycles, ensuring that every hour, every drop, every seed, every pound, and every pass counts. So pass, you know, every time you turn around with the tractor, delivering better outcomes with less resources. Technology drives sustainability in our customers' operations. So this is a neat slide. So you've got improve outcomes driven by existing technologies. I'm gonna click away so my camera's gonna go away so you can see the full screen here. So you can see fuel saved, you've got fertilizer reduced, you're saving soybeans, you're 
not use as many herbicides, which goes back to the good thing, because herbicides, you can argue, definitely cause cancer, and there's a lot of bad things that herbicides can run off into water streams. You know, by improving that and reducing the amount, you know, it's it's not a solution that fixes it overnight, but it's a step in the right direction. You know, emissions going down, things like that. I mean, you know, someday you'll probably see like EV tractors and stuff, but we're way, way far away from that. It'll be a long, long time. And you may not even believe in EV technology, so maybe you laugh at that. But I, I think it's interesting just to see, though, you, you want to see companies that are old like this, not just becoming stale and obsolete. You want to see old companies pivoting into new and exciting things. And that's exactly what John Deere is doing. So this one's more on the construction side, you know, again, using less materials. The earth only has so many materials. Emissions, again, are avoided, you know, reducing less fuel. Got more roadway life, less materials used. You know, a ton of great information here. Just doing good for businesses, for people, and for the world. So this talks about operating sustainability, you know, benefits for stakeholders. They are committed to sustainable energy use and things like that. So it's something to, to point out. So real quick on the financials, and then I'll do a closing, kind of let you know what's going on, what I did with the stock. So please do stay tuned for that. So net sales by product category, this is fiscal 2020. Of course, we had one quarter in 2021, but I think it's good to have a snapshot of 2020 to see what's going on. So the ag and turf was about $22.8 billion, and the construction and forestry was about 9.2 to give you an idea of how the, the company is, is built up. So when you look on the left-hand side, agriculture and turf, you've got small ag, about 8.1 of that, and then large ag, 11.4, and turf's about 2.4. So turf would be things like your lawnmowers. You see your neighbor running around on the on the green little tractor riding lawnmower, that's probably a John Deere. And they make smaller tractors and turf equipment for golf courses, things like that. Construction and forestry, you got road building, 2.9. Construction's 3.5. And then you got compact and forestry. So with road building, you'll see, again, you'll see a lot of the equipment used to build roads and interstates. You'll see John Deere equipment. So net sales by major markets, they are a global company. The U.S. and Canada, where the most of the business is, but you see Western Europe there. You see Central Europe, Latin America, and then on the far right, you've got Asia, Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and the Middle East. But they are trying to grow all these different segments, all these different geographical areas of their business. So this goes back to the R&D and the amount of money they've spent. So consistent R&D investment. They're, they're not only investing money in R&D for the equipment to make the equipment better, but also that technology that makes, you know, that improves the equipment on top of that. So you're talking about making your engines run more efficiently, but then you're talking about software that's actually helping use less seed, use less spray, things like that. You can see the operating performance metrics here. This is a good slide that kind of shows you the sources and use of cash. And this is from 2004 to 2020, and I won't go into much detail on it, but you can take a look at it and see, you know, you got dividends and share repurchases here. It's a pretty big amount of the cash return to shareholders. Other, I'm not sure what the other is. Ending cash and equivalents. So you can see there's quite a bit of cash return to shareholders. Of course, you want to balance there. So it's good to see dividends and, and some buybacks. But then you can also argue, like, use some of that money to invest in R&D. But they've really done both. So they have done a good job of investing in R&D, as we covered earlier, plus giving us as shareholders a little bit of dividend and, and doing some repurchases when the price makes sense. So this slide shows the dividends declared. So technically it fits in the DJI category. I mean, they had some flat years here though. So that's why some DJI investors, they wanna see consecutive dividend growth. So when, you, when you think of dividend growth investing, the general method, the old school method on that dividend growth, you want the dividends to grow, right? A lot of times when you see it now, it's dividend growth and you think of the share price and the dividends growing, which is why I call it DGIF. So DGIF, dividend growth investing for fired, is this term I made up where you take DGI, dividend growth investing, but you want the dividend to grow as well as the share price. And you can see they had some flat years here, you know, 2014, 2018, but, and then they had another flat period here and they raised it recently, but they had a good trend, you know, upwards from 11 cents upwards and kind of stopped. But what this is right here is they stopped paying dividends and they started to use that money to invest in research and development for this technology, which I would argue is a much better investment than the dividend. And that's why, which is why I think this stock is actually attractive because I think you're going to start seeing a lot of the benefits from that investment on that technology side. And they're just kind of rolling and ramping it out. I think we're going to see a cycle. So this might be a good long-term hold, but I'm interested in this one as a cycle to kind of ride the momentum of that cycle for the next several years. Let's take a look real quick at John Deere just on Fidelity's website. The bird's on my head, above my head. So remind you to follow me on Twitter. The handle is at Fired Up Wealth. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, 
please do that now. Hit the subscribe button. Click the little bell to get notifications. That way, when a new video comes out, you'll get notified right away. I'm releasing at this point. I'm doing new videos every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, so you can expect new videos every week to a week. And definitely hit the like button. Drop me a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. And what's next? Should I sing? Should I sing the song? So did you catch the reference to the beginning? John Deere Green. In John Deere Green. And I can't sing. I can't sing. And I can't use the song for copyrights, but I can just do a little jingle with my really bad voice. And to let you know, um, I was just trying to make a joke. Keep it light earlier. If you're watching this, I'm in Vegas right now. I'm probably sitting at the pool having a cocktail. So life is good and follow Fired Up Wealth and your life will be good too. If you're watching this video, you might not be the typical um, Fired Up Wealth follower. I think the, the followers that are here do have a blend of growth and DGI type stocks. But the channel is dominated you know, recently by growth. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I have a soft spot for dividend growth investing. And we're going to be doing a lot more of it. In fact, I've brought in a, fr a friend from Singapore who just recently did a very detailed document. His name is James. He's part of the Fired Up Wealth community. You can join the private community by going to Patreon, Fired Up Wealth Patreon, joining Discord, taking a look at us there. But he just did a detailed deep dive write-up, a PDF document, fired up wealth analysis document on John Deere. And uh, it was very good. It had a lot of great points in it. And he's much more of a value conservative investor. And so the two of us really balance each other out well. I'm, uh, I'm not the most aggressive, but I'm pretty aggressive. I'm somewhere between moderate and aggressive. I'm moderately aggressive. And he's somewhere between conservative and moderate. So moderately conservative, I guess. But we kind of balance each other out in the middle. And I think there's some good yin and yang there. So I'm going to take this off. The birds are probably annoying you. Follow Fired Up Wealth. There's also TikTok and um, whatever you're into, you know, Instagram. We're on Facebook. Just check out all the platforms at Fired Up Wealth. So real quick here, John Deere, what I'll do is I'll move this over down here. So the dividend yield is 1.1%. You can see, let me turn this off. So the dividend yield is 1.1%. Pays $3.60 annually. The PE ratio right now, the TTM PE ratio is 22.63. Peg ratio five year is 0 0.60. That's trading around $330. It dropped down to about $320 yesterday, which is a I thought a pretty good opportunity. The high, the all-time high was $400 on this stock. And you also can look at the PE ratio and historic PE and say, you know, this thing is actually too expensive at 23. I would argue that it's still inexpensive at 23 and that the historic PE doesn't mean as much because they're doing things as a company to pivot into more growth, into innovation and growth. And I think there'll be a cycle of accelerated sales and revenue. So when you think of if you've got farming equipment and it becomes obsolete, you're going to replace it every so often. I think this is going to have some pull through, some pull forward, where more farmers are going to choose to upgrade sooner because of the benefits they can get from the efficiencies that they'll gain from having this new equipment and this new tech technology. So I think you'll see kind of a mini super cycle over the next maybe five or 10 years, which is why I'm interested in purchasing the stock for my portfolio. So what you see on your screen, this is actually the PDF document that we posted several weeks ago in the Fired Up Wealth community and Discord. This is written by James, who's a moderator, and you can join our Fired Up Wealth community by going to Patreon and joining Patreon, you'll get access to Discord. And this, that's where we posted this PDF document. So there's several pages, eight pages here. I'm just going to go through the postscript, some of these highlights that James put together for us. I think they're very good. So James notes here that the financing services part of the business is doing well. They provide loans to their customers and earn about 20% profits. So you got construction and road building, and that's you know higher sales in 2021. And of course, with any kind of infrastructure plan that could be boosted as well. So something to keep in mind, new products with latest technology, latest X9 combines. There's more details. He's got linked there have 45% more harvesting capacity than previous models while 20% more fuel efficient focus on technology. So I mentioned earlier, the CTO, the chief technology officer, they've brought in to oversee integration of different, different technology stacks and deer to provide seamless solutions for their customers. Having this tech stack architecture allows the company to prioritize their R and D efforts to think about which piece of technology can be stacked on top of a product. Very good analysis there, James. I agree in precision agriculture. This is really key here. 
Okay, lots of opportunities are available to help customers unlock value, improve efficiencies and planning. Like they can do 100 seeds a second, pretty cool stuff. Robots, instead of robots, it's row like R-O-W bots rather than robots. There's this GNS, GNSS technology rather than just GPS te technology. So it uses a combination of both. Autonomous features for obstacle de detection allow machines to see, think with AI algorithms, et cetera. So imagine a machine that can see and spray fertilizer and do it more accurately than a human being can, right? That's pretty cool stuff. Data platform collects real-time data, allows farmers to see. They, they're doing analytics as well to help farmers understand which parts of the field can generate more yields. There's lots of science that can go you know, behind it. It's kind of like fishing. I've got a buddy I talked to the other day at the pool. We've got a community pool and he's like, yeah, man, I think it's cool what you're doing with Fired Up Wealth. Like I subscribe to so this one dude that does bass fishing and I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's, there's tiers from 50 to like a hundred dollars a month. And he teaches us how to, to bass fish. So like different parts of different lakes, he'll actually break down maps of where to fish at certain lakes and things like that. And like, there's literally a niche out there for everything. And I digress, but I think it's pretty cool. I just think that stuff's kind of, kind of neat. So, but they can see here, it says farmers can see what's happening on the field and basically monitor the crops and the activity and the success and the statistics of the, of the crops. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. I think retrofitting capabilities. So John Deere is able to stack on new technology on older generations of tractors. Now, this is something that James brought to my attention that I was not aware of. So thank you again, James, for putting this together so they can take old tractors and actually implement this new technology into those older machines and equipment, which I think is a huge opportunity because if you have a $250,000 combine, you're not just going to go replace it right away. Instead of doing that, it, it allows John Deere to bridge that gap, you know? So some people want to replace the equipment and just go brand new, you know, but some people that don't have the money or, you know, aren't ready to completely go. It's kind of like cloud with cloud. You can go all SaaS or you can do a hybrid cloud. So this is kind of like their version of hybrid cloud. It's a good analogy, I think. But basically, they can stack the new technology onto, onto older generations of tractors, allowing farmers to benefit from incremental improvement in their equipment at an affordable price and not need to buy brand new, really expensive equipment with all of the latest technology features. So it's a baby step, you know, walk before you run. This is really good analysis, though, James. Thanks for putting it together. And again, if you want to access this, we do these every one to two months. We'll drop one of these. PDF documents. It's a deep dive, fired up wealth, due diligence analysis on a stock. And that's part, just one of the benefits that you get of being a patron in the fired up wealth community. From a technical level, it actually is really interesting because I posted in fired up wealth in the Patreon community that I was targeting John Deere for the month of June is something that I was considering buying. And I thought that it would probably come down to 325 to $330. So I alerted the community that that was what I was looking at, you know, with the fired up wealth community, it's, it's certainly an educational thing just showing people how my methodology works with, you know, buying, buying stocks and selling stocks. So it's really educational. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell anybody to buy or sell, but what I did is I noticed that I thought the stock was probably going to have a nice little pullback. It broke this trend line. You can see this green trend line right here. It broke that trend line and it broke some of the moving averages and kind of came down and so I drew this up saying it would probably bounce off this, you know, 325 to 330 range. It ended up going to 320. The next drop down, you can see the yellow line. Worst case scenario, this red line is the 200 moving average, which is sitting right around $300. Now, it did make a nice bounce off this 320 range. It's now trading at 330. You know, today is Friday. Today is Friday, uh, June 18th. So you're watching this video a couple days after that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with the stock. It could always retest that 320 range. Or it could even go down, I think, as low as 295, which would be slightly lower than that, that red line, that 200-day moving average. But in my personal opinion, I think it's an opportunity in that $325 range. You know, 325 to 330 was my target. I always use dollar cost averaging. So I buy, you know, buckets usually 20 to 25% at a time and buy different lots. So right now, if you're interested in knowing, I did buy some. I did buy some. And right now, and I plan on holding it long term, I did buy some John Deere. I've got a total of, I don't have a huge position. I have 20, 20 shares of John Deere. I know it's kind of an expensive stock. Um, and you can, you, know, you can do fractional shares too. So keep that in mind if, if you're um, a younger investor or a newer investor and you think $300 a share is too much, you, know, you can do fractional shares. 
I also want to point out the fact that a lot of people say, well, I'd rather buy a $10 stock because I can get more shares. If you take a pizza and cut into eight slices, it's still one pizza. Okay. So you only concern about your money and the percentage you gain the money, not the percentage of the shares you own because a share gives you voting rights. But if you have like in my case, 20 shares, it's no different than if you have 0.25 shares and companies that pay dividends, they're going to, if you're reinvesting those dividends, it's going to drip and you're going to get fractional shares anyway. So it's really no different, but I have 20 shares and I'm sitting at like $329 range basically. So I'm, I'm basically slightly green on it. So I do have 20 shares. I plan on potentially adding more. I'd be happy to have maybe $15,000 in my portfolio. That'd be about 1%. I'm, I'm about 1.5 million, $1,569,000 right now. So I'm just under $1.6 million. Um, so this is generally a 1% holding. So 16,000. So I, I could add another 10,000 if it went down. The way I kind of do it is I dollar cost average. If it comes back, I've got room to add. If it goes higher, you know, sometimes I just have a smaller position and I let it run and it's okay. It's just a nice, you know, dividend stock that I think, you know, is worth $325 a share, but it certainly could go lower, especially if the market rolls over, you could see $295. So I always kind of save room to dollar cost average in. Please subscribe, please hit like, please comment, check out the other platforms. Appreciate your time and attention. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.